So welcome, welcome to uh, this session with uh, Carla Breaking Friction today. I'm just getting a few people into the waiting room, um, but can I just remind everybody to pop themselves onto mute if possible. Um, if you aren't already, this is just because um, it can be really distracting when you're mid-flow to hear a dog, a cat, a goldfish, a baby, uh, any family member whizzing in. Um, so if you could just keep yourself on mute, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, for those of you I haven't met, uh, my name is Caroline. I am the Partnership and Engagement Manager at Enactus UK. Um, so it's my role really to look after all of our fantastic partners who have been able to join us for our employability fair um, with Carlisle Break being no exception. So um, before we start, I would absolutely love it if you are able to join us on um, social media. This is where we have all of the best and most relevant information, um, anything that you can get involved with as a student, um, anything that we've got coming up, uh, please do follow us on whichever platform um, you use the most really. Uh, just as a quick reminder as well, we will be recording this session and we'll be posting it on the Enactus UK YouTube channel. Um, that'll happen in the next couple of weeks. So do keep your eye out for that. And if you subscribe to us, it'll send you that um, notification reminder so might be an idea to, to do that if you don't want to miss out um, and that's the same for all of our other sessions that have been happening over the past few days um, if you have been able to join us uh, this slide will be um, very familiar to you by now but it is just a final plea to uh, register if you aren't already um, because it's the only way that we can officially recognize you as an actor student and uh, by registering it unlocks uh, all of the exclusive access to opportunities like this event, but also kind of the upcoming events that we have with our um, partners, all of the different things that you can get involved with, with the Enactus UK programme and projects. So please do keep your eye out for that. And um, like I said, if you aren't already registered, head to enactusuk.org forward slash join. And if you aren't um, connected to your team yet by typing this in, we'll be able to connect you. Um, so even more reason to join. So I'm going to try and explain Enactus in five minutes. It is a bit of a challenge because unlike some of the other societies that you might see around university, it doesn't always say what it is on the tin. So just to try and my best. Um, Enactus is the UK's leading youth uh, social action and youth social enterprise charity, which works to develop thousands of young entrepreneurial spirits every year. And what that really means in practice is we try to be the bridge between the world of work and the world of higher education. So we do this by working with over 60 UK universities uh, to develop student led projects that benefit local or international communities but they also address one of the 17 or more uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals. And with this being student-led projects, it's a real great example for you to develop your skills um, in really creating a project that benefits a local community for, for you to address a need that, that you've seen um, and also work with students who have that like-minded mindset um, of, of making a difference to their lo local community. Um, like I said before, and Actus is a little bit different because we actually have links to 17 of the UK's leading brands like Carlisle Break and Friction um, and the UK's leading graduate employers. So brilliant to be a part of. And we also have over 230 business coaches from across our organisations who are there on hand to develop you both personally and professionally but also to develop your project. So a fantastic thing to be part of and really kickstarts your graduate career. So I do hope that you uh, have been convinced by me to join. Um, uh, so please do head to the enactusuk.org forward slash join link if you haven't already. However, I'm very aware that I'm not the star of the show today. Um, that is Sean. So I will uh, pass over to him now to, to really talk about how... Um, the STEM skills can, uh, how to market your STEM skills, and of course, an insight into Carlisle Break and Friction. So over to you, Sean. Great, Great. thanks, Caroline. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the session today. I'm glad you're able to make it. 
Uh, my name is Sean Carey. I'm the director of R&D for Carlisle Brake and Friction's uh, Mechatronics Division, based in Pontypool in South of Wales. Um, uh, we're part of a larger corporation called Centro Motion, um, and, but today we'll focus pretty, pretty much on the work that uh, we do here in the UK uh, and how that relates to STEM and how we view STEM and employability and offer hopefully some, some helpful tips and advice and answer some good questions later in the session. Um, so I'll start by trying to advance that slide. There we are. So uh, just, just so you know, Carlisle is not a company that a lot of people know about, but uh, we're a global company. We have, uh, we have engineering and sales and manufacturing across the globe. Um, in, here in Wales, uh, we're responsible for mechatronic systems, which if you haven't heard that term before, is really a, uh, a, a combination of electronics, mechanics, uh, and software and electrical engineering applied to different products. In our case, it's a product used to, to, to develop brake systems for a range of industrial, mining, construction, and agricultural vehicles. Um, you know, your farm tractors, your diggers, your earth movers, that type of thing. Those are our, those are our products. And we, we specialize in the hydraulics and electronics here in the UK. Our factory, as I said, located in South of Wales in Pontypool. Uh, we were designated the Center of Excellence for Mechatronics uh, in 2020. So that means our R&D and our product line management is focused here in this site. Um, our manufacturing uh, facility here has about 114 employees and we ship uh, over 200,000 hydraulic products um, every year from this, uh, from this site. Um, some examples of the products that we uh, design and test and manufacture here are things like master cylinders, boosted master cylinders, power valves, and electrohydraulic systems. Um, uh, things that you would use, uh, obviously, in a brake system in a, in a heavy industrial vehicle. Things uh, a little bit different to what you might find in a car or a motorcycle, but similar in principle, just usually a lot bigger and a bit heavier. Uh, some of the customers that we serve uh, are familiar, uh, but a lot of them are not because they're out of the mainstream a lot of the time. Um, a lot of machines uh, in the what we call the yellow goods business, uh, but uh, and these are located around the world from the United States, Mexico, Brazil, China, uh, India, South Africa, Russia, Germany, Italy, France, you name it. If they, if they make construction machines there, we, we support them. So uh, in my part of the business, uh, we do product engineering, uh, sometimes referred to as research and development. Uh, and, but we take the customer inputs, the needs from our customers around the world and turn those into products using a system engineering approach. Uh, we do analysis of the customer's needs, try to understand their application as best we can, uh, develop design concepts around that. Sometimes we have current product off the shelf to offer, but sometimes we have to create something new from scratch uh, and we're well equipped to do either one of those. Um, after we've got a concept, we do some mathematical analysis to test that concept in the virtual world before committing to making it. And after we're successful there, we move on to making prototypes, testing them in, here in our labs, and then in some applications, taking them onto vehicles, testing them um, in the field or at a proving ground, uh, before shipping them on to, uh, to our end customers. So that's the R&D basic um, workflow. In manufacturing, uh, we manufacture or we make um, a lot of parts here. We, we machine castings, we machine turned parts, uh, and we have different functions and departments throughout the factory that are specialized in each of those processes. As you can see here, some examples of, um, of those workstations and the people uh, at work. Um, got the quality department and the quality is not just done at the end, quality is checked all the way through. Every operation has its own quality standards and checks. Um, we do high volume turning uh, the round parts uh, that you can see um, actually the output there with the robotic inspection picture. Um, but we do have a robotic inspection station that checks the quality of that product. Uh, we do a special process here called honing, uh, which is unique and, and one of our um, 
sort of critical processes to make the internal features as fine a finish as possible so that the product will work and, and last the life of the vehicle. Obviously, with all this uh, machining and making metal chips, we have to wash quite uh, seriously a lot of these parts to make sure that all the, the coolant and the swarf and chips are taken out of the parts before we take them into assembly. Assembly is done in clean rooms to make sure that there's no contamination uh, getting into our products. And then uh, you know, we have quality labs to check our products and quality uh, also checks the incoming material that we buy from some suppliers. And then, you know, this really um, runs the full spectrum of uh, you know, what we would refer to as STEM subject matters from, the, from product engineering, quality, manufacturing, engineering, assembly, uh, controls, CAD design, um, maintenance and plant engineering, but also, you know, STEM as a, as a collection of, of knowledge and, and skills uh, is in our accounting and finance department, our logistics department, and of course, in our IT department. So if you look at that list of roles, uh, the, um, there's, I think, very few people in our business that are not uh, directly related to STEM in their main job role or uh, have a very close reliance or um, interaction with STEM uh, as a you know as, as it comes through you know tools and applications. So um, we have every uh, every one of the roles that you see listed on the screen here. We have people that have got either a university degree, um, an apprenticeship, a certificate, on the job training. Uh, or many, many years of experience that roll up into their ability to uh, be effective in these roles. And as far as how important it is uh, to Carlisle, you know, STEM subjects, if we didn't have people that were skilled and knowledgeable in science, technology, engineering, um, we wouldn't be able to do anything that we do really. Uh, it's it's important for us. It's absolutely vital to us, not only here in Pontypool, but across the, the entire uh, Carlisle business. But it's also true across pretty much all industries, anything that you could class as an industry, whether it's motorsport, medicine, um, you know, or, or medical technology, the entertainment um, industry, manufacturing, construction, the list is, just goes on. Um, but it's also true in the service sectors, um, you know, healthcare, yeah, environment, finance, public utilities, all rely on people with uh, a good grasp and ability in STEM subjects. Um, maybe now, uh, Caroline, would be a good time to, for you to take back and, and put that first question up on the screen for everybody. Of course. Let me just uh, pull it up now for us. So at Enactus, um, we love a Slido. So I would absolutely um, be thrilled if you were able to um, join us at Slido.com uh, partway through Sean's presentation um, and really reflect on what he's been saying and ask yourself and tell us why you think STEM skills are important to the future of, the, of work. How you do this is um, if you hold your phone or any other device up to the QR code, hopefully you're a bit familiar on how to do that with uh, what's been happening in the last 18 months, um, it will then take you directly to the page and if you can just type in your answer. If you don't want to, um, scan the QR code, just open another tab on your browser and head to slido.com. It will then ask you for a code, which is Carlisle BF. It is um, case sensitive. So just be aware of when, when you're typing that in, that you've got the, the capital letters there. And then if you just um, type in why you think it's important to the future of work, really uh, interested to see what you, you think of. So give everybody a bit of time to, uh, to get there and hopefully we'll get some skills. Oh, there we go. Yeah, great. Innovation and technology, innovation, engineering. I don't know, Sean, you've got anything to, to say on what's uh, been popping in at the minute? Yeah, well, it could be someone writing my, uh, my presentation that I gave earlier today to uh, my executive leadership team. You know, those, those words, all of those terms pop up on a regular basis. Um, in in our business because as fun as it is 
to do the design and the engineering and create new products, it always has to be grounded in business because the business is here for a purpose. Um, so uh, yeah, this is great. There's some great stuff coming in here. Great, this looks really good. We'll just yeah. give everybody maybe a, a couple more seconds to, to give us your, uh, your thoughts on uh, what's in there. Yeah, I like I like I like some of these concepts of you know sort of cross crossing boundaries. You know the importance of environmental sustainability in every industry, and that's abs that's absolutely true. You know, and uh, you know we do a lot of work here cutting metal. You know, we that's what we do. We cut metal, we put it together, we send it out. But along the way, we are reclaiming uh, all of the off cuttings and recycling it. We're taking all of the coolant that we use in the machines and we're reprocessing that back into coolant that can be used again. Uh, we've got a solar plant on the roof that generates electricity uh, that goes straight into our machines uh, and joining up the, the work that we do with the wider world is uh, it's absolutely, absolutely vital. It also helps us understand our customers, our end users and the, and the places they do their work. Agile design, I like that one. Yeah, there's some, some great ones there. <laughs> yeah, efficiency. Efficiency is one that um, often is, uh, efficiency is a good one because a lot of people think of it in terms of like fuel efficiency, right? It's all about using less energy. Uh, and so that leads to things like weight reduction. Uh, but some vehicles, uh, that's the wrong direction. Some vehicles need to be heavier to effectively do their work. Uh, so it's, it's good to take weight out but the benefit is not in fuel economy. It might be helping the end user put the weight where they need it. Think about like a forklift truck uh, that needs to lift three or four tons. Well, you need it to be very heavy so it doesn't topple over when it lifts its load and, and drive through a warehouse. Um, and the same with, uh, you know, ag tractors. They, they have to pull heavy, heavy loads in the field. And if they were very lightweight, they wouldn't be able to generate traction. So efficiency is, is a nuanced. Uh, subject and it's important to think in how products are used um, and, and so that efficiency can be targeted in the right places. So great stuff, great stuff everybody. Well I don't know if you want to take over again Shauna. Sure, yeah I'll go back. A lot of clicking in Zoom, I'm used to Teams where it's pretty instant. So. <laughs> There we go. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So that's um, so that's STEM in Carlisle and STEM in the wider industry. And you know, I have to say, as uh, as someone who's new to this country, relatively new, uh, you know, the UK is is really a hotbed of innovation uh, and STEM talent. There's some there's some very unique skills and talents available um, in the industries across across this country. So if you're starting your journey in STEM, um, or, you know, maybe you're in your, you know, in the middle of your degree, or maybe you're about to leave and, and join the, the, the working world. Um, it's a, it's an exciting place to do it. There's, there's so much, uh, variety and, um, and also great accomplishments across the UK. Uh, if, if that's, if this is, you know, where you're thinking of, of starting your career. So I'll, uh, I'll just move on. I'm hoping not to do a lot of slide reading. Uh, I know that's boring. Um, hopefully we can start to inspire some some feedback and some other some other uh, interaction. But I wanted to talk a little bit about how to market your STEM skills, and this is important um, both you know before you get to the stage of interviewing with uh, with a potential employer, and then also during the interviewing process when you're you know you really you're you're competing with other people, other peers. Um, you've got to make a good impression. You have to stand out from from a potentially crowded field. But one of the important things to do, uh, and this is true STEM or not, but research the organizations that you wanna connect with. You know, make sure you understand what they do. Get, it, you know, get out there into, into the, the, the web research, read their websites from top to bottom, look for, look for what's happening with them in the news and their relevant uh, industry press. The more you know about a company and what they do, the better you're able to connect with the, the team that are interviewing you. Uh, and then the more you know about them, the better you're able to connect your skills and abilities uh, with either 
existing job openings or potential future job openings that you might have an interest in. Um, when you're engaged with uh, interviewers or you know, maybe making that first contact uh, over the phone with a recruiter or someone from HR, as it may be, um, really talk up your knowledge, your breadth of knowledge. What have you covered in your uh, pursuit of a STEM degree? What skills have you got? Um, and don't be bashful. Don't be shy. This is, you know, this is when you have to really make, um, make an impression. You have to connect and you have to get their attention. So yeah, don't be bashful. Don't hold back. Um, play up your strengths. Connect your, your self with your degree. I always like to know what is it that got somebody into a particular field of study, whether it's in, particularly for me, it's mechanical engineering most of the time, but I'm sure it's true across industry. People want to know why are why are you doing a thing? Why are you spending three to five years of your life studying a subject and embarking on a new career? Um, so the 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 more you can show the, a connection, the more that that motivation comes through, the better for you. Um, and don't be afraid to be very specific. Talk about a, a particular specialism in your field. Talk about how you love to solve differential equations or write code to accelerate problem solving. Um, you know, the, I'll, I'll talk the things that I understand. I won't be able to, if you're in the medical profession or medical technology, I probably understand a bit less, probably diff more difficult for me to give a, a concrete example. But the thing is, when you're talking to somebody in a STEM field about employment, you are talking about doing all of those things that you've learned in university uh, as a as full-time job. So don't be, don't be bashful, be ready to demonstrate. Um, another, another good point, bring examples of your work when you, you, know, you get to that interview stage and it, you know, maybe it's face-to-face -face or maybe it's by Zoom, but there are ways for you to showcase the work that you've done. You know, a, a good body of work done in a university project, maybe a group, um, you know, sort of final project type of setting, show it, walk people through it, help them understand the process that led you from the problem statement to your final uh, presentation, and you know, it, it's what you have, it's what you're bringing to the conversation. So uh, play it up. Don't don't let the fact that you haven't got five years of work experience under under your belt hold you back. Uh, no one no one's really expecting that um, at that stage of your career. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you know how you're? I'm having to refresh myself on this one here. Why is it important to employers? Well, you know, you as a, as, a, as a STEM graduate, as a prospective employee to an organization are bringing um, potential, right? You're bringing a lot of potential uh, to an organization. And, then, and not only that, you are so close to those fundamental uh, theories and practices associated with your degree, be it engineering, be it uh, programming, being a design, you are so close to those fundamentals that you, uh, uh, you, you, you're usually closer than most of the people that are practicing because most people practicing in STEM have, they tend to uh, gradually over time sort of specialize and, and become focused in a slightly narrower part of their field. But when you're coming straight out of university, you, you've just come out of the cauldron of all of that learning and all of those subjects. So I get excited to see a new graduate come because I know that they're, they've are they been closer to the fundamentals, which means from a training perspective, um, you know, you can go anywhere. You can take on anything. You, you've got an open mind. You should have an open mind. Um, you're ready to grow and continue to learn. Your STEM career is, a, is really a learning journey from you know, throughout and really should be, and that's how you get the most out of it. You bring good knowledge, good technical knowledge. Uh, you know, you can easily integrate to the organization and whatever systems they have in place, the business systems, the technical systems, the manufacturing systems. They take a lot of technical knowledge to grasp, and there's so much change taking place that having flexibility uh, and willingness to learn is a, is a huge plus. And I think I already touched on, but you know, reinforce your connection to the field. What is it that inspired you to embark 
on that course of study. And I think I would actually like to go onto that next slide now, Caroline, um, and see what is the audience actually engaged in right now? If we could. Definitely. Yeah, no, bear with me. I'll just start my screen share. Fab. So if you can head over back to Slido, um, I'll just present with Slido now. It should uh, give you the option, but we'd love to know what you're studying. So if Slido is still open, I think my screen is going a little bit slowly, but it should pop up if you've kept it open as a tab. But we shall see. Best laid plans with technology, hey? I'm sure it's on its way. <laughs> but it gives you time to uh, have a think. Um, but also, you'll have noticed, um, oh, here we go. Um, I was going to say, you'll have noticed there's a Q&A option on Slido. If you do want to submit any anonymous questions on there, we'll be able to field those with Sean uh, towards the end of the session. So, but for now, um, we'd love to know what degree you are studying. So if you could just head to slido.com and type in the hashtag Carlisle BA and then we will, or if you want to, you can scan the QR code. That's also fine. Um, so we'd love to know what you're, you're doing. Okay, I've got lots of ah, computer science. There we go. Oh, biomedical science, mechanical science. Oh, supply chain management. Interesting. Biomedical. Oh, great. What a really, really good mix. Wow, there's some great ones. Yeah, it's good because, you know, we, we did talk about the STEM subjects. They cover such a wide field. Uh, and, and really, there, there are not many um, fields of, of practice that don't rely on it in one way or another. But this, this mm -hmm. range of people that will be practicing um, in different STEM specialties is, is really ex excellent. Aerospace engineering, a good one. Computer science. Great, yeah, there's some really good ones there. Um, uh, yeah, no, good stuff. Okay. Brilliant. I don't know if anyone else wants to submit a last minute request uh, or information, but I think, oh, there we go, someone listened. <laughs> Great. Okay, well, I'll stop uh, screen sharing, Sean, and uh, I guess back to over to yeah, you. <laughs> Sure. Um, well, that's really the end of what I prepared for today. So I don't have anything else to share, but I, I think uh, I was going to just relay a little bit of experience in, in, in interviewing through, uh, through my own personal career. And it's something that came up more in the second half of my career and is, is seems to be, at least in my own personal experience, growing a bit, is um, two things, uh, pre-interview testing. Um, and then I can take many forms. I've, I've had pre-interview tests um, where I've had to do loads of math, uh, mathematical problems uh, under, under time pressure uh, or like nonverbal reasoning or verbal read, uh, reasoning, depending on the job role. Uh, so don't be surprised when you get out to that part, uh, when you get to that stage where you're, you're applying for jobs that you might be faced with, uh, with some of these online tests. Um, I think there's a mixed view on how effective and beneficial they are, but regardless of uh, point of view, there's still a reality, the things that you might be asked to do. Um, and the, the key thing there is relax <laughs> in any of these tests, be calm uh, and, and just make sure that you uh, avoid distractions because um, a family member may come in, not realize what you're in the middle of, and that can, uh, that can really be a challenge. Um, Another common tactic uh, that is, and I think this is especially important in, in my field, in mechanical engineering, we're responsible for you know, designing of, uh, you know, machines or vehicles, uh, is sort of on the spot design problems where they'll hit you with uh, maybe a sketch on a whiteboard or a piece of paper with some sort of schematic or diagram. Um, and they may ask you to work out some problems, you know, solve uh, you know solve an equation um, another one i've had is uh, they put a blueprint for some sort of a gearbox in front of me and asked me to assess the bearing loads and where the forces are going uh, so you have to in a way be prepared for anything but the key thing is just trust in the fundamental things that you learned in your degree and in, in, in your studies and 
don't be afraid to use those fundamental rules or fundamental tools or principles uh, and, and show those interviewers what you've got to offer. My point of view, when I do that, to, because I, I use the same uh, strategies, um, I'm not particularly interested in the, the answer that people get. You know, I'm not looking for that one correct answer. What I'm looking at is the thought process. What I want to see is people um, analyze, you know, assessing a problem, trying to work out the approach, not being afraid to try, fail, try, fail, try, fail, uh, until, they, until they hit on the right solution. It's, it's all one of those things, it's all about their attitude but it's, it's your attitude coupled with what you know uh, to prove to the people in the interview. And they may be, you know, it, it, it could be any, any number of people. They could be, you know, managers or they could be the, the chief technical specialist in the office. Uh, and they just really want to see how you handle a problem. Most of the time, the right answer is less important than the approach. Um, in, in mechanical engineering, for those of you that are mechanical engineers out there, uh, it's the free body diagram is the key thing. Always be ready to draw a free body diagram because that is the fundamental problem solver. I don't know in other fields what is the equivalent, but it's the simple sketch on a paper mapping out all the knowns, the unknowns, and you go from there. Um, yeah, I think, you know, Caroline, I think uh, I'm, I'm hoping we get some good questions from the audience. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, yeah, we've, really um, true, yeah. Definitely, we've had a few come through um, on Slido, but if anyone wants to pop them in the chat, please feel free to. Um, but one like question that we've had through is, how did uh, you get to where you are in your career? Like, what was your career path? Okay, um, my, my career path has been, uh, I've always loved machines. Uh, from, a, from a very young age, I love cars and I love bicycles, and that uh, is just a, uh, an interest that I've pursued all the way through school. Uh, and then I, it, when I entered college, I kind of fumbled and I went in, in directions that really weren't consistent with what I love to do. It caused me a bit of delay and a couple of changes along the way. But once I, I reconnected, um, funnily enough, I, I won't, it, my father was a truck driver, right? So I was always around heavy goods vehicles and, and the workshops. And I got a call when I was at university from a company that makes the brakes and the axles for the big, big trucks. And they asked me if I'd ever heard of them before. I said, well, of course, yeah, you make, uh, you make all the parts for the big trucks. And it, I was able to make a connection. And from there, I was able to get the experience and um, for, basically always followed what I was interested in. So I was always able to talk with a bit of excitement or passion about the, the jobs that I pursued. I've never followed the herd. Um, I grew up in Detroit, went to university in Detroit, but everyone, most of my colleagues in school were going to work for the car makers, but I never really wanted to do that. I wanted to work on the bigger, I'd say more exciting machines. Uh, and I always have, and it's, it's worked out pretty well. Great, thank you. Um, and then another question that we've had is, um, what advice would you give to a student um, right at the start of their career? Just be ready to learn. Uh, just, just always remember the learning's not over. Uh, in the when you're just starting your career, you're going to have a still have a lot to learn. But it's 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 all going to be based on what you've what you've studied, your degree. Is a great foundation, but it's it's just the starting point. So just keep an open mind. Great, thank you. Don't be and afraid then, to ask questions. <laughs> thank you. No, no, don't apologize. Cut you off too soon. Um, and then Francisca's just asked, um, how do you think we can make STEM subjects more appealing to younger pupils? Which is an interesting one. Yeah, it's um that's a hard one um, because STEM subjects they're challenging right? It, 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 there's a lot to learn. Uh, a lot of it, usually the foundation and the, the sort of what we always call the weeding out process was a lot of mathematics. And if you can get through the mathematics, um, you can then basically learn and do anything. Uh, so I think, you know, I think the governments and society are trying to push that. I've got a, I've got a young, young daughter at home and the, the mathematics that she's studying at her age I never saw until I was probably three years older. So I think getting that comfort level 
with the foundational subjects that, that enable you to learn the, the more advanced subjects is the key. And the thing is, it's hard, but we have to, we have to have to persevere a little bit, or we have to maybe find the excitement in learning what is essentially a new language, um, the language of science and math. I think that's some uh, really good advice. And then another one's just come through. You have to forgive me. I'm reading them off my phone. Um, but it says, um, so which skill do you think is the most important for students to work on to help them advance in their career? That's a broad one. <laughs> Believe it or not, out of, after all that we've talked about, communication is the most important thing. Because your knowledge of your specialty, whether it's biomedical, whether it's chemical, software, computers, mechanical engineering, uh, that's almost taken as a given, right? You, you, you come into a firm and you're, you're supposed to know that. Uh, and you'll be working a lot around a lot of people that already know a lot of that. The key thing in all of it, it, throughout the career is communication. And that's both really good, active, attentive listening, and then a mix of uh, assertive communication. Um, and I would also say a bit of empathy. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and then one of the, the final questions that has come through is um, just how would I impress you in an interview is one of the last questions. <laughs> well, I, I'll, I can look around the, the office here and the, and the team that we've built up over the last three years and the ones the ones that impressed me, uh, well, they're all here because they impressed me and my, my colleagues uh, through the process, is um, a bit of, bit of confidence in what they're doing, belief in themselves, grasping the fundamentals, um, being open to learning. Um, it, you know, when it comes to that stage of it, it's, you know, th there's no one answer, there's no formula. Also, be yourself. You know, and, and believe in yourself. And that that says a lot. That says a lot about a person. Brilliant. You know, so, you, sorry, Caroline, I, I'll, just, I'll just finish with, you know, you, you come through university degree, you, it's a lot of hard work, right? It's a lot of hard work. Um, so have faith in yourself, you know, at, believe in yourself that, you know, you, you can do what it is that you're pursuing. And that confidence and belief coupled with uh, good listening and um, a bit of humility makes a great impression on people. Great, thank you. They're the only ones that I can see on, on Slido. Um, I don't know if anyone's got any last minute questions, um, but if not, I think um, all that's left to say is thank you, Sean. It's been a really insightful session into kind of your own career and um, why you think STEM skills are so important and exactly how students can, can market their own. So thank you so much. I hope um, our students today have kind of got enough to, to take that away with them um, and really apply it to when they're looking for, for jobs in the future. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks to everybody that joined us today. I really wish you the very best uh, in your pursuits. And I hope that uh, this is be helpful to you in some way. So best of luck to you. Thanks, everyone.